Hello and welcome to part 3 in our series on how to solo over a 2-5-1 chord progression. In this session we're going to look at four different keys. The key of C, F, B flat and E flat. And we're going to look at 2-5-1 progressions in each one of these keys. Each key has its own particular feeling and we want to become aware of this on an instinctive level. We don't want to just look at the 2-5-1 progression on paper. We want to be able to recognise the 2-5-1 progression in each key by ear. So the best place for us to start is by practising the chord progression in each key. On the screen you'll see the exact chord voicing that I'm using. These chord voicings are important because they're well balanced. Each chord contains three notes. They contain the root, the third and the seventh of each chord. Because we're wanting to absorb the sound of this progression, we're not going to use any fancy rhythms. Just sustain each chord and listen in deeply to the sound you're making. As well as the chord diagrams that you'll see on the screen, you'll also see some suggested major scale patterns that you can play. Of course, how you play these scales and where you play them and what fingering you use is entirely up to you. So let's get started. There'll be four clicks in and then we'll go through four times in each key.
Once you've familiarised yourself with the chord shapes that I'm using, I'd recommend going back over those 2-5-1 progressions and practising your scales over the background. I'm now going to present four different examples of how we can start developing a structure in our practice when playing over the 2-5-1 progression. All these examples will be in the key of C, but as you become familiar with the concept, I would recommend that you take these ideas across to the other keys. So the first thing I'm going to do is play the 2-5-1 progression in C and use what I call target notes. And the target notes you'll see I've marked in as red notes on the scale pattern. In this first example, I've decided to play a D note over the D minor 7th chord and hold that note for 4 beats. Then play a G note, that's my next target note, to play over the G 7th chord and hold it for 4 beats. And because I'm playing a C major 7th in the background, I've decided to play a B note here. The B note is the major 7th in a C major 7th chord. Let's have a listen to that. These target notes serve as a framework for our solo. Instead of just aimlessly wandering around a scale, we've now got some target to aim for. It's like placing our feet firmly on solid ground. Now for example number two. Did you notice in the third and fourth bar of the 251 progression I played a C major 7th arpeggio? That is, I held the B note for two beats, then G for two beats, E for two beats, and C. And those notes spell the C major 7th chord. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is use connecting notes, that's the notes that I've marked in blue in our scale pattern. These are notes that are contained in our scale and I'm going to use these connecting notes to join our target notes together. What we're aiming to do at this stage is to create a simple melody based off a given chord progression. In this instance, the 2-5-1 progression. Now for example number 3, target notes in red, connecting notes in blue. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
and now example number four. And now here's the 251 progressions again, played four times through in the four different keys, and this time I've transposed the target notes and the connecting notes into each key, so that you can go through the scale framework for each key and select your target notes and the connecting notes and create the same melodic line that I've played here in the key of C, you'll be able to transpose that to the other keys of F, B flat and E flat.
Okay, so that's it for this session. I hope you've got something out of it, and I look forward to catching up with you again on the next session. Bye for now.